Hello everyone and welcome back to Jack Scraps. Thanks for joining me today for a design team project for Country Craft Creations. I use their exclusive collection, Homer's Diner, which is a 50s diner theme inspired collection. Lots of fun to play with. So let me show you what I created. So here is my Homer's Diner takeout bag. <laughs> So I created this little takeout bag with the paper from the collection. I love it. This measures three and three fourths inches wide by nine and five eighths inches tall. On the top of our takeout bag, I added one of the ephemera pieces to a clothespin that holds my bag topper. And my bag topper is a pizza. So much fun and i love how it just worked out that the word pizza was right underneath the bag topper i didn't plan that <laughs> i created the bag topper with cricut design space cutting out all the different elements and then piecing those together to create a pizza lots of fun it has the name of the diner there homer's diner friday specials chicken fried steak or cheeseburgers for 25 cents can you imagine <laughs> So underneath the sign, we have a little flower here, Prima flower, and then I added an enamel dot there. So let's find out what is in our takeout bag. So here we have a little Sunday tag flip. On the front, I added a little pizza pin which I thought was appropriate and then some various ribbons that I had in my stash just for some fun and then here is a good image of the Sunday tag flip now the final size for this is three and a half inches wide at the widest part of the Sunday and six and a fourth inches tall without the stem with the stem, it's about seven inches tall. And I only uh, did the cherry stem on the first one, but I love how this turned out. It has lots of different colored glitters layered on top of each other. And then in the background, we have this shimmer white cardstock. And then of course the paper collection here in the front. This looks yummy. <laughs> so when we flip this over, what you'll find is uh, blue cardstock and this is the same on the back of every one of the Sundays. What I wanted you to have is an area that you could add photos, do some journaling here if you wanted to, and you not only could add little square photos but long photos and you could even take another one of these, make a template and do a full photo cutout and then your picture would be a Sunday and you could just put that right here on top and I think that would be so awesome to have a full picture Sunday. So that's how the backs work. On the front is where I did all my decorations. So on this one we have the little jukebox which I made into a side tuck and here is the little tag that's in there. I added a little record on top of that as, as well as a little glitter enamel dot there. And then here is the actual Sunday. So I did the flooring here on the bottom part of the Sunday, the glass, and the topping is the one with the jukebox and records. Gives you a little bit of a scene. And then of course we add our little twister folks here <laughs> and that makes up our first Sunday. On our second page here, we have for the toppings, I added some little velvet blue ribbon there at the top, added one of the ephemera pieces here, and then tucked in this drive-in ephemera piece. Thought that was appropriate for the car. <laughs> and then down below, we have this beautiful paper, and then I added a flower from my stash now, what's neat about this page is at the top, flips off. And on the back of that, 
we have a little set of skates here, which is a tuck spot. And I just added this little element there to show you that. And then here is the actual Sunday. And it has a kind of a hidden spot there. I cut right into the paper to make a little tuck spot for our little journaling card here. Now, when I created this, I did use the eight by eight collection pack. Perfect for these small sizes. Again, there's the paper on the back. And our next page, I just loved this image. So I really didn't want to put a whole lot of stuff on it. I did add some enamel dots here and there. And then as you see the little dots here, I also added enamel dot right there. And what that tells you is that this is a like hidden compartment and you pull out this cute little card. <laughs> here is our next page. We have the wonderful records here at the top. I added some enamel glitter dots there. Down below, we have the beautiful music paper. I added a flower here. I added on this little ephemera piece of the poodle skirt and saddle shoes, along with an enamel glitter dot. And then this piece opens up to reveal the dancers. And it says, please, no dancing on the tables. And that's a little tuck spot. That's held closed by a Velcro dot. Again, the back is the same. And then here we are at the diner. And I added these cute little knife, fork, and spoon charms, which is dangling from a felt flower. And here in the center is another kind of hidden uh, tuck spot. So here's the beautiful paper. And then here's your menu for the diner. So cute, you could add a photo to the back of that. And that just tucks right in there. And for this Sunday, we have a little flower here for my stash. I fussy cut out this dancing girl and put her arm out here like as if she was reaching for the candy. I think it's so cute. <laughs> and then up top, you see the poodle skirt again. This side opens, revealing the saddle shoes. You could put some hidden journaling or photos here. And then on this side, this flips open as well. I added one of the little diner receipts there that I fussy cut out, but you have room to add something there. And of course, added some ribbon across the top there. And for our last page, of course, I had to put the name of the diner and I added a glitter enamel dot here, as well as down here at the bottom. And then in the center here, what you'll see is two little Prima flowers that I stacked on top of each other, added one of the ephemera pieces here, and I actually made this whole piece a little pocket. So these little elements come out. We have strawberry shakes and snow cones. <laughs> so tiny. And then of course on the back is the same. So that is our Sunday tag flip. I really love it. And our little takeout bag. Now I have a tutorial showing you how to create the bag as well as the tag flip. So if you can stay, please join me in creating this project. For those that can't stay, thank you for joining me. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future videos. Now, on to the tutorial. To create the takeout bag, you're going to need one piece of cardstock. You can use solid cardstock or a decorative pattern. I'm using this piece from the paper collection. We're going to score at one, six and a half, and then we're going to rotate this one time to the right. Next, we're going to score at two. Now on the side where we have the one inch strip going down the side, we're going to take our scissors and right at the top of that score line, we're just going to do a little bit of a diagonal cut. We're gonna do that at the top and at the bottom. It's easier to flip the page over to do the bottom. Now let's fold. 
Now we're going to put the takeout bag together. So let's flip over our cardstock. Typically when making this, you lift over the left-hand side and you fold that down. And then you take the one inch strip that's on the right hand side, you add your adhesive and you glue that down onto the left hand side. Because I have a pattern going on, I don't want to interrupt that. So what I'm going to do is lay down my right hand side first. I'm going to add my adhesive and then I'm going to fold over the left side on top. That way we have a nice seamless pattern here and on the front. Now what we're going to do is fold up on our two inch score line at the bottom of the page. This might get a little bulky. We're going to take the corner of that flip and fold this down, creating a triangle. And then burnish that down. Okay, so I took that, folded it down. I'm gonna do the same on the opposite side. <laughs> this paper is so good and thick, it's kind of hard to do that. Okay, so see, that's what I've done. I've taken the two corners, folded them down. This created a little triangle here and over here as well. So now it looks like that. We're going to open this up. And we're going to take our points for this section and push those down into the center. Okay, see how easy that was? So we had them folded, we're flipping them back up, we're opening up the compartment, and we're going to push down on our corners like that. And then now burnish that real good as well. Next, we're going to take the bottom piece. We're going to fold this just a little bit over the center line here. So here's our center. We're gonna fold this up and over just a little bit over the center. So I'm gonna go up right to underneath the first set of blocks there if you're using the same paper. If not, that is about a little over a fourth of an inch or a fourth of an inch over the line, just to give you a bit of a reference. Now we're going to repeat the same process with the top flap, but let's move this one out of the way. If you're using the same paper, you can use these blocks again as your guide. For those that don't have this paper, again, just go over a little bit, a fourth of an inch or an eighth of an inch, whatever you prefer. Okay, now they overlap nicely. And what we want to do is glue these down. So I'm gonna add adhesive right here to the top of this bottom flap. Whoops. Put our top one down and burnish. Now we're going to take our bag and we're going to rotate it so it is on the long side. Let's start with the bottom here and we're going to take about a half an inch or so and we're going to fold this up like this and we're going to fold this over to where this point is right here to this point. So about halfway, if you're looking at this diamond here, we're going to fold it over at the halfway point, okay? Now you probably could put this in your scoreboard and score it. Should we try it? Let's do it. Let's see if that works. So you would have to line up 
the point right here with a score line in the scoreboard. And it's gonna be really thick right here. Okay, so let's see if that made it any easier. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to fold it up and over. And it goes right to that point. Actually, that was easy. We're gonna to go to the other side. We're gonna do the same thing. We're going to fold that up and over to that point. All right. Now we're gonna fold this up and over and that's to that point. Burnish those down. Okay, so now that we have our two sides folded up, the next thing we're going to do is actually put it into the formation of the takeout bag or paper bag. But before we do that, I'm going to use my pinking shears, or at least I think that's what these are called. And I'm going to go over the top edge here. Now, if you have decorative scissors, you could use that just to give it a nice, bag look there. That's cute. Okay, and now we can fold down on this piece, put our hand in the bag, and we want to pop this side up like that. See? Make sure all the sides are up, even the bottom. Just put your hand in there and push out on all the score lines. Kind of square off your corners. For the sides of the bags, what we want to do is push down on this score line and fold it backward, if you will, like this. Do that on both sides. So you're taking this score line, pushing it in. And then our little bag folds up. <laughs> How cute is this? So there is our little takeout bag. It's like a slimline bag. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's cute. <laughs> I love the design on here. Now, if you want, you can cut this bag down to any size. I thought about folding this over and doing the bag topper, which I will show you that as well. Now we're gonna start working on the Sunday tag flip that I created to go in the bag. So in Cricut Design Space, I found this Sunday image that I decided to use for the project. I opened it up. I used their images as well as took those images and created some of my own into one file. Now that file will be available to those that have Cricut access. Since it is Cricut images, I'll be able to share that link with you. So it will be in the description box below. For those that don't have access to a Cricut, I've created a template for you and I'll have that link down below for you as well. To create this project, I started out by cutting one of these images and this was going to be my cover. When thinking about the additional pages, I realized that I really didn't want the cherry stem to be on each of the pages. So what I did was take this image and I sliced off the stem. That left me with this image. So this is my cover and these are the pages. I cut out seven of these pages in black cardstock. The next thing I wanted to do was think about the back side of each of the pages. And I decided that I wanted that to be a room to add writing or photos. So I took the inner piece from the Sunday, which looks like this. I sliced off the stem of that one as well. And that will fit easily onto our Sunday, giving us about an eighth of an inch border all the way around. I really like that the black made these papers really pop. 
So what I did was cut out seven of these and these all went on the back of the Sundays. So this is your place to do writing, add your photos, whatever you like. On the front, I decided that this would be the area that I would do my decorating. So what I've done is gone through, I've already added the cardstock to the back of each of my Sunday pages. And on the front, I've already cut out all of the pieces that I need to decorate the front. I've even put little posties on it so that I know what it is that I'm doing on that particular Sunday. So what I decided to do is film me putting all these together. And then at the end, I can come back and just walk through what each one of these are. But I did want to show you what the cover looks like because I've actually already filmed that. So here is the cover. I love it. Lots of glitter stacking here. I have a shimmer sheet in the white. We have the paper collection here on the front. There's blue glitter in the background, white glitter. We have a yellow, brown, and then this coral glitter at the top. Instead of a red cherry, I wanted to match the paper collection and went for the coral color. I love it. And then of course in the back, I have my blue cardstock. So that's what I'm going to do next is put these together. I probably won't talk through that, but like I said, in the end, I'll come back through because that's when we'll add our holes to our Sundays and we'll put a binder ring on there to bind it all together.
Okay, so I have all of my pages together now. On this one, we had a flip open topping, which I thought was fun. You could put little photos in here, do some secretive journaling. I cut these elements out of the paper. <laughs> They're so tiny, I love it. And then I put this dancer as if she was reaching out for that candy there. <laughs> fun. We have a flip up bottom. So I added a Velcro dot down here at the bottom to flip this up. And granted, you can put photos up here if you want, whatever you want to do with them. This is a cut in design. So I just cut a little piece here. Now, if you notice, I put everyday household tape on the back before cutting it. It just helps the paper. And then you can just tuck in your little menu. How cute. Added one of those felt flowers here at the top. Now this is a flip off topping. I think this one's really cute. We have some little holographic paper up here at the top, the ribbon, and I even left the car open so that you could tuck something in there if you wanted. I might find something and put it in there. But this is held on by a Velcro and it'll come off. But on the uh, rings, it'll be better because it'll flip off and then you can flip it over. And then underneath, I added a little cut in the paper as well. I might do a little more decorating after this, but I wanted to give you the gist of the project. Here's the next one. I used the Prima flowers to just stack them up, added that element on top, and then made a pocket out of the flowers, which I love these tiny elements. They're so fun. And you'll notice that on some, I added like the cherry part to them just for decoration, and then other places I didn't. Now for this one, I, again, I love the full image here and I made a secret tuck spot. This is a really tight pocket. So just be careful with your glue when you're adding your glue around it. So hold your image up to the back of the paper, then add your glue around it, as I showed, I think. This is the side tuck cluster, which is actually not a cluster now that I look at it. It's really just one element the little jukebox there with the records in the background and the dance floor, love it. And then of course, our beautiful cover. So that's all of our pieces. Now you just need to put them in the order that you want them. So I'll figure that out and I'll come back and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, all my pages are in order. And now we're going to punch holes in the cherry area to add a binder ring for the closure. What I've done is cut out another one of these images. And I kind of figured out where I wanted to place the hole for this. Now, what I did was kind of figured out, just eyed where the center might be. Because if you go actually in the center of the cherry, it's going to be off a little bit, to the too much to the right. So you're going to be more over toward the top left portion of the cherry. If I think about it, I'll try to include that in the template. So I'm using my Big Mouth, We Are Memory Keepers Big Mouth, but you could definitely use a, you know, a hole punch, a hand punch. Um, it might be a little thick for the one with all the glitter because I have lots of layers there, as you can see. Uh, that's why I chose to do this one. but. You might be strong enough to get it through that with just a hand punch. I'm not. <laughs> I already have issues with my hands. I'm not going to risk it. So what I'm going to do is use the eighth of an inch hole. I'm going to put my template on here and then use this to guide where to place all my holes. So I'm going to do that off screen because this will probably make the camera move and I don't want you to get seasick or anything. But I did want to explain kind of how I figured out my hole and what I'm actually doing, okay? Okay, all my holes are punched and I'm just gonna add my little ring here. I was gonna do a smaller binder ring, but I thought maybe a one inch would be better.
So there's my bag topper. I created this using Cricut Design Space. So cute. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have used black cardstock, but it does even out the black down below. And I kind of wanted it to pop, so I don't really mind. Now you could easily recreate this by just making your own pieces or you could use a die cut to create a topper if you have a square or a um, decorative shape just punch it out fold it in half and put it over your bag and then decorate it it's that easy you don't necessarily need the pizza one that i used here so it's just a lot of fun to put something on there now i will say that i'm loving the little a clothes pin here. I just glued on one of the tiny little elements there of the girl and I love how that turned out. So that's our project for today. I hope that you enjoyed this and we'll give it a try and if you do please tag me or post photos on my Facebook or on Instagram and tag me. I would love to see them. Thanks everyone for joining me for this project and I will see you next time.